Work began this week on a $1.3 million renovation of the 4th Street Mall in downtown Albuquerque. That section has been closed to vehicular traffic years ago, but it has become a problematic space of empty storefronts and homeless. It's part of a larger ongoing effort to make downtown more lively. And earlier this year, I sat down with City Councilor Isaac Benton and urban designer Jeff Speck, author of Walkable City, to talk about making downtown more user friendly for those on foot. Speck is working under a $50,000 contract to create a walkability analysis for downtown. He will present his study on July 31st at the Albuquerque Convention Center. I'm here with Jeff Speck. He is an urban planner and a new urbanist devotee, along with Councillor Ike Benton. He's also the same as well as an architect. We're going to talk about downtown, some of the things going on downtown, and how we can improve downtown. Jeff, let me ask you a couple of quick questions right off the bat. You did a, a wonderful talk here at Hotel Andalus on earlier in the week about this. Tell me about what you're going to be doing for the city. You're looking at downtown, and what are you looking at, and what are we looking to improve? So. Um I define my scope of work, and I say this at the beginning of every meeting, and I've been having lots of meetings, mm -hmm. uh, as helping you all figure out how, in the shortest time possible, spending the least amount of money, we can actually witness the greatest increase in the number of people walking mm -hmm. and biking in your downtown. Mm -hmm. And every step I take is pointing always at that, that north star as a, uh, as a uh, indicator. I mean, us achieving that will be an indication that I've done my job. Interesting. You mentioned uh, an interesting term, urban triage. Yes. I love that term. Explain to us in... in it's a little in, threatening. In, right, in it's a sound a little interesting. Yeah. What's going on there with urban triage and do we need something critically done in downtown to make it more walkable? Well, two different questions. Mm -hmm. um, you're already starting with good bones. Yeah. You've got a good block structure. You've got streets like Central that really ain't broken. Mm -hmm. Um, ur what e urban triage, the concept of urban triage, which my, my uh, mentor Andre Stuani coined, um, what it acknowledges is that most cities that are walkable, and certainly most cities that are known as being walkable, um, large parts of the cities aren't walkable. Mm. But what they have is a substantial <coughs> connective network in their downtown of certain streets that are walkable. Mm -hmm. And those streets alone are responsible for generating the reputation of the city as a walkable place and in fact creating street life mm -hmm. and urban culture within cities. Mm -hmm. So urban triage is merely the practice of identifying those locations where if you make the streets safer, uh, which is what it's within the city's purview to do, mm -hmm. um, there's actually a great likelihood that it will be occupied by people mm -hmm. because it's already got other things going for it. Interesting. And you've explained some of that on your in your talk. We'll get into it a little bit. Those those uh, little chemical additions that make for a walkable place. Mm -hmm. Councilor Benton, good to see you. Thanks for coming in. Um, one of the projects you have been uh, talking about recently about downtown is the 4th Street Mall. Mm -hmm. No small amount of angst in the community. We can't seem to quite turn a corner. Where are we at on 4th Street Mall right now? And, and what's the plan? And what do you think about the idea of more walkability in that section of our downtown especially? Well, 4th Street Mall, I think, is, is a key uh, segment of, uh, of the street network that was taken out mm -hmm. uh, and with good intentions back in the 70s or when it was constructed. Um, but it hasn't worked that well as a public space, mm -hmm. let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. um, people love the trees, um, uh, but otherwise you don't hear much positive about uh, mm -hmm. Fourth Street Mall. So, um, uh, and there, there are social issues with it too and, mm -hmm. and uh, um, issues with just kind of vagrancy and so, so forth. Um, on the mall. So um, my simple thought about it has always been let's just make it a good old downtown street again. Um, what came out of that were, were some rather high-flying ideas that are now coming back to uh, earth, I guess, if you will. <laughs> That's just my perception sure. on it. But, uh, <laughs> but I do think it's an important part of the street grid. We can still do a terrific street and, and, and Jeff has, has looked at it and mm -hmm. is going to have some opinions about that. But uh, a, gr a good street with great street trees and wide sidewalks where we can have cafes and so forth. Right. Opening up downtown uh, specifically, and again, you have almost inherited this part of the city with your uh, getting back in office in, in this part of downtown. When you look at downtown from 30,000 feet in the overall, mm -hmm. what's working to you that, that, that is the ember to blow on, to get things moving again? What, in your mind, what's working downtown right now? Well, for, from my perspective, you know, it, it is the history of downtown. It's the historic fabric, which is uh, tight blocks, mm -hmm. uh, buildings up to the street, mm -hmm. the traditional downtown elements. And, and of course, our downtown was really a downtown uh, for 80 or 100,000 people. 
right? right? If you think about it, it's not a very large downtown, and, mm -hmm. and we've, we've created these outlying urban areas of Albuquerque as well. Mm -hmm. But it brings us back to our history, mm -hmm. and um, there are great places downtown, you know, the Chemo Theater, mm -hmm. Maisel's Jewelry, 516 Arts, uh, uh, the, uh, 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 the Man's Hat Shop. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got some, we've got some right. grit and we've got some soul downtown, and that's great stuff. I like hearing you say grit and soul. I like that, because I agree with that completely. <laughs> Uh, Jeff Speck, one of the interesting th parts about your talk I liked was the four reasons that people will walk. Literally, I'll boil it down uh, for you to illuminate. A reason to walk, a safe place to walk, a comfortable way to walk that has spatial definition. I'd like you to kind of touch on yeah. that a little bit. And an interesting walk. What I call my general theory of walkability, which is meant to be a little bit of a joke, but um, is how I understand things working in American cities, and I've, I've worked in many, mm -hmm. is that in America, where driving is so easy and cheap and we all have the car in the driveway between us and everything else, if you're going to get people to walk, if you're going to create parts of your city where people will walk, you have to provide a walk that's as good as or superior to the drive mm. and that can only be accomplished by doing four things simultaneously. The walk has to be useful, safe, comfortable and interesting. Mm -hmm. Useful addresses whether you have the proper balance of uses in your downtown. Like most American downtowns, uh, you have a, a, a great um, preponderance of workplace and not much residential. Mm -hmm. Great gains, talking about what's happening well, what are the embers to blow on, mm -hmm. there's been a lot more residential going in your downtown. Mm -hmm. And the real challenge isn't the subsidized housing of which you have plenty or the luxury housing of which you have what the market will bear, but finding ways to have attainable market rate housing mm -hmm. for the millennials and the empty nesters who aren't rich uh, who want that urban walkable lifestyle. Mm -hmm. That's got to be a key focus. Mm -hmm. Safe is the safe walk is what I spend most of my time on and that's essentially creating an environment in which pedestrians feel they have a fighting chance against being hit by automobiles mm -hmm. and um, it has to do with all the details of the streetscape. Do you have 10 foot travel lanes which are 30 mile an hour travel lanes or do you have 15 foot travel lanes, which are 80 mile an hour travel lanes. Sure. Well, guess what? Most of your streets have 15 foot travel lanes. No wonder people are speeding. That's something that's easy to fix. All the details that add up to um, pedestrians feeling comfortable and bikers. Mm -hmm. You mentioned spatial definition. The comfortable walk uh, refers to the fact that people like to feel enclosed. When you're, when you're walking around, you want to feel like you're in an outdoor living room. All animals, humans too, uh, simultaneously seek prospect and refuge. We want to see our predators, we want to know that our flanks are covered. And we can't help that, it's in our DNA. And so we like streets that don't have the parking lot against the street edge, but have the building against the street mm -hmm. edge. And then the interesting walk has to do with the fact that in your, in your, you do your urban triage, you figure out where people are likely to walk if given an opportunity. In that area, you have to make sure there aren't any blank walls, parking structures. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of cities have a rule that if you're building a parking structure, the, it either, either needs to be hidden from the street by a sleeve which is happening in the building just west of the Andalus Hotel right now, beautifully, mm -hmm. a sleeve of condos hiding the parking from the street. Right. Or you just have to activate the first floor with retail. Right. But if you don't use an urban triage approach, you're applying that to every parking structure in the city, and that's why a lot of cities have dead retail under parking structures in places where no one's going to go. Mm -hmm. So those four criteria applied with an eye as to where they can achieve success mm -hmm. is the strategy for creating pedestrians downtown. I brought up during the session with Jeff on Tuesday night about Innovate Out ABQ. Mm -hmm. Interesting possibilities there. I, yes. I, I'm going to assume success here. Let's start Absolutely. with the conversation Let's right do here. That. Right? Profound changes to downtown, if you really tease this out over the next three, four, five, ten years. Mm -hmm. Very different urban animals, so to speak, right. downtown. A little more demanding on walkability issues. Mm -hmm. Is that part of the thing that the idea here with Innovate ABQ? It's a jump start for other things beyond innovation? Very much so. Mm -hmm. I think Innovate ABQ has um, raised an energy level again about downtown. I always say our, you know, my sense of, of our energy level has, has certainly gone up and down over, over my 35 years in Albuquerque. But, but uh, uh, the Innovate ABQ is a big investment by UNM mm -hmm. and the city and the county. Um, CNM is, is now coming into right. to the area as yeah. well. Um, we're making a big investment in our convention center mm -hmm. and we really want our, our convention and visitors uh, business to thrive. Mm -hmm. And East Downtown has been a success mm -hmm. with the Old Albuquerque High. That was a public-private private partnership, the kind of model I think mm -hmm. we need to be looking at. Sure. Um, and, and I think a, a, a public process, a, a, a very 
open and public design process about how we tackle that whole area is part of the reason we brought, brought Jeff into town. Mm -hmm. Interesting. You don't live here, Ike lives here, but it, it is for both of you. Crime and the perception of crime and getting mm -hmm. folks from the Heights to downtown, from the West Side to downtown, all those little things we talk about in our city, how to make downtown more attractive. Any thoughts there? If, if what we can pull off here with Jeff's help and others and yourself and others, is that, is that going to be the key for you? Is that, do you think that's going to be the turning of the key for Albuquerque? I think so. I yeah. think if we're successful with, with what Jeff's goals are, um, that the perception of crime, and I always say perception, right. because I don't think downtown is inherently more unsafe I than, than other parts of the city, mm -hmm. but there's a perception issue, and, and it's, uh, it's been a challenge for our tourism business, mm -hmm. as well as just visitors coming in from other parts of the city, and, and, and people from the suburban areas understanding how important uh, downtown is, mm -hmm. we've got to get past that. And um, Jeff's met with some of our police officers who patrol downtown. Um, I'm working to get more steady police patrols downtown, not to bring battalions of sure. police down here, but just to have a presence 24-7 is something that we need. Uh, but the vitality of a good walkable area greatly decreases crime. I think everyone can agree That's on that. That's right. I've read a study somewhere that the sight of <clears throat> baby strollers <laughs> it, it, you know, everyone's got a line, even criminals. They, they, they don't want anything to do with it. They want to go somewhere <laughs> yeah. else. If they see a lot of baby strollers around. Right. right. Your downtown. Exactly. Your take on crime. I'm 30 seconds left. Your crime yeah. in Albuquerque. Well, I, I wouldn't know. say crime, but okay. I'll say the perception of okay. vagrancy and panhandling. I don't think you have a crime problem. Mm -hmm. But I have to say this is the first, because I've heard it from so many people, this is the first study I'm doing where the safety category has to include issues of, sa of public safety, not just safety against vehicles. Gotcha. Um, what I learned from the police, a number of interesting things about how, for example, people are discharged from the prison, um, told that their, their bracelet is going to get them a free ride anywhere on the bus, right. which isn't true, right. and they go to the bus station. And then uh, other things like that that are easy to fix mm -hmm. that will be part of my report. People being released in the middle of the night, downtown, spilling, all those things that we've been talking about for years. Jeff Speck, thank you for coming back to Albuquerque. You were here last summer, I know, and, and you're going to be doing a lot of work for us, and we can't, we can't say uh, more. Downtown is ready. So, Thank you, Gene. Go get after it, as they say. Counselor, good to see you again, as always. Thank, Thank you, you for your work on this, too. Appreciate it.